What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here, welcome back to another PS5 overview. So in this video we're going to be covering a couple of new things that have come out over the past couple of days. We have a new firmware spoofer, which has caused a little bit of controversy here and there. And we also have a new payload from Lightning Mods called ETA Hen, which we're going to get into. So we'll start off with the whole ETA Hen payload. If you go on, you know, ES7IN1.site, your exploit host, most of the exploit hosts have updated to use the idle sauce host which has the payloads included and we can get the exploit loaded up. Now when this actually loads you'll see that we have two additional payloads at the top. We've got a ETA hen for with cheats and without cheats. So what this payload is from Lightning Mods it's basically a similar idea to gold hen on the PS4 where we take multiple features and combine them all into one payload. So for example this ETA hen payload at the moment, it's got the case stuff included, which allows us to run our PS4 fake packages. The PS4 fake package enabler is included in that payload. It enables the debug settings. It's also got a jailbreak IPC call, which is for jailbreaking homebrew apps so that PS4 homebrew apps designed for the PS5 can take advantage of that and kind of access stuff that a PS4 app would normally not be able to access. We also have an update blocker built in, which unmounts the update partition which prevents any system updates from being downloaded while the payload is running. However, it's very important to stress that this is only while the payload is running. It's not persistent. So when you reboot the PS5, then the updates will no longer be blocked. So it's only for while the payload is running. So you should still be using some other method to block updates for when you reboot the system. The lib hijacker is also included. There's the version with cheats and without cheats. So the version with cheats includes illusions you know, debug menus and 60 FPS and 120 FPS patches. And the other one does not include those patches. And that's mainly because there's a conflict between illusions, cheats slash patches and the jailbreak homebrew app feature that's built in there. And that causes some kind of conflict. So, you know, if you're planning on running homebrew apps, like when the homebrew store comes out for the PS5 or items flow, then you're going to want to use the one without cheats so that it will function properly. And then of course if you want to access illusions cheats and patches then you would run the one with cheats but if you use the one that includes the cheats then you don't want to be using homebrew apps like the homebrew store or items flow because it will cause problems so you also have included an ftp server on port 1337 as you'd expect we also have the kernel log server on port 9088 to get the kernel log we also have an elf loader running on 9027 which is the main elf loader that's running in the background from the lib hijacker daemon process there's also additional features coming, a hen config file for settings, re-enabling the native PS5 homebrew loader, more user land patches, items flow integration, maybe a jailbreak whitelist for homebrew and a plugins loader. So yeah, definitely some interesting stuff that is upcoming with this as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at it here. We're going to go ahead and try and run the one with cheats from lightning mods. So let's give this one a try. So you just select it and then there we go. Game patch thread running for the hijacker we've got our current ip address all the information there about the ports for the klog server ftp all that information is there it's kind of handy that it shows you your local ip address of the ps5 there as well in the notification you've also got it down here on the exploit host which is quite handy to include that now so yeah there we go so that's up and running so we should be able to run our fake packages like assassin's creed mirage here let's give this a try and as you can see it is running so we do have the ps4 fake package enabler working so that is running just fine and then we'll also try a game patch for bloodborne so it should be able to apply the patch yep there we go 60 fps patched so now it's essentially just one payload and you have everything you've got your 60 fps patches You've got your PS4 fake packages that you can run. You've got debug settings enabled. You've got an FTP server running, a kernel log server. You've got a elf loader listening for payloads that you can send and execute. So pretty much everything all in one, which is pretty handy. So that is the ETA hen payload and more of that functionality will come into play once we get the homebrew store and items flow releasing for the PS5. So pretty interesting stuff there. So moving on from that, we also have, of course, the firmware spoofing. So let's go ahead and get back onto one of the exploit hosts here and take a look at that. So we'll go onto the idle sauce host again. Then what we can do is when we actually run the exploit now, most of these exploits will automatically spoof the firmware version on loading the exploit. So you don't even have to run a payload. Now, if we actually check this, we can select the option here to show kernel build OS and SDK versions. If we select this option, you can see 
it pops up here kernel ps4 sdk version 0x99999 and then of course if we do it again we'll just keep doing this you can see that we've got the kernel sdk version is still on 0x403 that's 4.03 and then the upd version the update version is also uh, 0x403 on this host so what is the advantage of this? Well, this particular one is only spoofing the PS4 SDK version to 0x99999. Now, the reason why that's useful is that it means we can now install our PS4 fake packages, our games that normally require a backport patch to be merged with the application in order for it to install. This basically bypasses that issue because those games that normally require a higher firmware to install, they're checking the SDK version and they're checking to see what SDK version does the console have. And of course, if the SDK version for the game is higher than what the console has, it's not going to allow it to install. So by spoofing the SDK version, the PS4 SDK version, as you can see here to 0x99999, then the version on the PS5 is always going to be higher than whatever game you try to install. So any game, any PS4 game that you try to install, PS4 package, it should install it just fine now. So there's no need to merge the game with the backport patch to reduce the SDK version to get it to install. That's not required anymore with this spoof. This will spoof the PS4 SDK version automatically when you run the exploit. And then once you run the PS4 fake package enabler, you can then install uh, a PS4 game like Assassin's Creed Mirage, and it should install just fine. The game package will install. And then of course you can just install the backport patch on top of that as you do on the PS4 and it should run just fine as normal. So no more issues now with PS4 backports, which is great. Although, of course, there is still the DLC problem that's not being resolved yet. We still have the issue where DLC is not working when it's installed and it has to be merged with the game in a specific way. So, but besides that, we no longer have the issue of having to merge the uh, backport patch with the original game package in order to install it, which is pretty handy. Now, there's also some other interesting things because there's two other firmware versions here that could be spoofed. There's the kernel SDK version, which is the PS5's kernel version. And then there's also the update version, this um, UPD version, which is also on 4.03. So if you spoof the bottom one, which you can actually do with another host. So if we head on over to uh, a different host, for example, I think... I think actually the only one that does it right now is going to be Jose Gonzalez's host, which is which is uh, J O S E X Gonzalez GitHub.io slash exploit. So this one in particular right now will also spoof the bottom uh, firmware version, the UPD firmware version. So again, if we go to show build OS and SDK versions, you can see the bottom one is now spoofed to 0x999. So that's the UPD version. And what that'll do is it means that when the console is checking for a system update to see if you're on the latest firmware, um, it will be checking that number there. So because it's spoofed to 9999, it will think you're already on the latest firmware and it will not prompt you to update the system software. So for example, if we hop back over here and we go to settings, I'm not blocking system updates right now. So if we go over to system and we go to system software, system software update and settings, you can see it says we're up to date. It thinks we're on the latest firmware. If I go to update using the internet, it says you already have the latest system software. So it literally thinks we're on the latest system software, even though we're still on 4.03. So this seems to be okay for now. The fact that we're, you can spoof the PS4 SDK version and the update version, and it's actually quite beneficial uh, because so far it doesn't really cause any conflicts. The problem is last night there was a bunch of hosts that decided to also spoof the PS5's kernel version as well and this payload here I think will also do that so let's give this a try if we run this. So what that one will do is it'll actually spoof the PS5 kernel version as well which is the middle one so you can see the middle one is now spoofed so kernel.sdk version 0x99999. Now that's kind of a problem. That's one that we probably don't want to spoof because there are homebrew applications and payloads that actually need to check your firmware version. So does the exploit host when you're loading that up as well. It needs to check what firmware you're on so it knows what offsets to use to load the exploit correctly on your firmware version. If your firmware version is spoofed to a different version, then it could end up loading the wrong offsets or more or less it will just tell you that your firmware is not supported because you've spoofed your firmware to a much higher version and only, you know, 3.0 to 4.51 supported. So even though I'm on 4.03, because I've spoofed that kernel SDK version there, if I actually try and run, say, HEN, for example, here, 
you can see here it says your firmware is not supported. So because I've spoofed my SDK version, it's not going to allow me to load those payloads because those payloads have a firmware check to make sure that you're on either 4.03 or 4.50 so it knows which offsets to load for your firmware version. So that's an issue a lot of people were running into last night because by default they were updating their host to spoof all three of these versions including the kernel version for the PS5 which was causing all of these issues where people couldn't run their payloads because of the firmware checks. So now that's basically been resolved. So most of the exploit hosts now as I showed before, will only spoof the PS4 SDK version, which shouldn't really affect anything besides your allowing you to install your back ports without running into an error. So it fixes that issue. So there shouldn't be any real problems with spoofing that version, at least for now. Yeah, and some of the other hosts, like Jose Gonzalez's host, will also spoof the bottom one, which is the update version check, so that you know you will not get prompted to do any system updates while you're running the exploit because uh, it'll be spoofing that firmware version and it'll think you're already on the latest update. So you will not get any system updates downloaded, which is pretty handy. And I'm not sure if that causes any issues with anything else. So far, I haven't noticed any problems with that one being spoofed. But obviously, the one that you really do not want to spoof is the middle one, your PS5's kernel version, because that will definitely cause problems with homebrew and payloads and exploits that need to know what firmware version you're on to load the correct offsets. So yeah, definitely avoid any hosts that automatically spoof the kernel SDK version. Again, Jose Gonzalez's one is fine because it doesn't spoof that by default. You actually have to run this specific payload in this host in order to get it to spoof your PS5 uh, kernel version. Otherwise, it will not do that by default, so it's okay. So yeah, for the most part, most of the hosts have kind of resolved this problem by now. But I just wanted to give you guys a general rundown of, you know, what these different uh, spoofers do for the different versions. Now, I believe this firmware version spoofing was originally discovered by Jafar, J-A-A-F-A-R, I believe. There's a bit of controversy because Zeko also discovered it not long after and ported it over to all firmwares. And then so there was some like controversy about who did it first or whatever. So I'll just give them both credit uh, and hopefully that will be okay. But uh, yeah, so Zeko and Jafar. So you may think, why would you even want to uh, spoof the kernel SDK version anyway? What kind of benefit do you get from that? Well, if you spoof the middle option, the only thing I've really found that's particularly kind of useful, I guess, well, not really, but one, one of the things it does do is it allows you to install game disks that normally require a higher firmware. So I've got a game disk in here. So this is uh, Last of Us Remake, Last of Us Part 1 Remake, which requires a much higher firmware than the firmware I'm on, 4.03, in order to actually install. So it just shows up as a PlayStation 5 format disk and tries to get me to update the system software in order to be able to install it. So, of course, if I spoof my PS5 kernel version, my PS5 kernel version, that middle spoof option, then you'll see that if I eject the disk and put it back in again with the firmware spoofed this time, because when I initially put the disk in, it wasn't spoofed. So it needs to refresh by uh, just taking the disk out and putting it back in now that the firmware is being spoofed. And you'll see that this time it takes a bit longer as it's reading the disk. And it really takes its time. But uh, yeah, there you go. As you can see, we have the option to install. So we'll just tell it to install the game. And there it goes. As you can see, it is now copying the disk. So that's something that you can do when you're spoofing the actual PS5 kernel version. It will actually allow you to install these games that require a higher firmware. However, yes, obviously, it, it would be a lot more exciting if you could actually run these games. But no, once they're installed, it will not allow you to run the game unless you're on the correct firmware. So is it really worth it? Probably not. It seems that spoofing the PS5's kernel version kind of causes more problems than it actually solves. So generally, I would recommend just not spoofing the PS5's kernel version at all. Anyway, just wanted to kind of cover that here in this video. We now have the ETA Hen from Lightning Mods, which combines a bunch of features all into one payload, which is really handy. And more coming soon for that as well, including obviously integration with things like items flow in the homebrew store and then of course we also have the firmware spoofing now which by default the exploit hosts will probably only spoof the ps4 sdk version some of them might also spoof the update version so that you don't get prompted for system updates and of course you also want to avoid spoofing the ps5 kernel version the middle option uh, because that will cause problems with your payloads and any homebrew that needs to check your firmware so anyway, hopefully that kind of explains everything there. So hope you guys enjoyed this video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And once again, I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.